on this computer. Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming late on a Tuesday, January 11th to our um, Canvas session. This is an introductory Canvas session. This is not a advanced level work session like that, um, but we are hearing information from teachers asking about, okay, what's Canvas? How do I use it? And uh, with all the discussion happening right now around learning continuity, I thought it'd be a good idea to offer the short session to give you information and then give you kind of next steps. And so I wanted to invite Tom Fortier here. Hi, Tom. Hello. Because he's our, our resident Canvas expert and helped with the initial setup of Canvas and getting it all going, making sure it was connecting to all your classrooms and things like that. Um, the other person who might show up later or you might see helping you with Canvas is Dustin Patrick. And um, I'll introduce him if he comes in. Okay, but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to share my slides. Um, they are in the chat. And I also put them uh, on the calendar invite. So you have this calendar invite on your calendar. And the slides are there too, in case you forget later, they're going to be on your calendar. All right, can everybody see my slides okay? Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. So I'm going to start talking and then Tom's going to pipe in whenever he needs to and to offer more information because he is full of, of Canvas knowledge, as I said. Here comes Rob. Okay, thanks. It looks like you're all, most of you are in the slides already, so that's fantastic. So this is about shifting to Canvas. So Canvas is a learning management system that the district has purchased through 2024 with the option to renew after that. So we have it, we have it for some time. We will probably have it going forward uh, for the foreseeable future. So it is a learning management system, which is different than anything we're using currently in Del Norte. So we have other things. We have Seesaw and Google Classroom and, and different tools that we use to teach, but we don't have a comprehensive learning management system. Google Classroom is moving that direction. They've added many things since it came out. Um, I am a Google innovator, so I've, I've been using Classroom for years um, since it was started. And they've added so many things with the grading and feedback and commenting and groups and other things that you can do in Classroom, but it's not at the level of a learning management system. Um, it, it does a lot of the same things in that it lets you put out assignments, make copies for kids, um, grade, and all those things. But it ha it's a much deeper level of, of um, analytics and information for, for us and for you as a teacher, for us as a district. And then it does a lot of other things, too, that you don't think about, but that are super important in connecting our learners uh, to their education and also keeping up that clear communication for all the people involved with the student, right? Teachers, uh, SPED teachers, um, IAs, principal, parents, uh, guardians, anybody that you would want to include, you know, can be part of this learning team for these students. So Canvas is a learning management system. It's for classroom communication and learning activities. And I listed just a few things that, that happened there. And we'll show you a few things today, but just know this is a, we can go very deep into Canvas because it does a lot. And um, I can't show you everything today. So why now are we talking about Canvas? Really because it is that foundation for instructional continuity. Um, I don't know it, how many things you've used in the past, but it's hard to manage multiple things all over the place with kids. I have taught, I taught this year briefly, and it, I try to centralize things, which is why I use Canvas. So my students would only have to go one place and I could put everything there because it gets very hard when they're like, where's that link? Did you send me that in an email? That's in a drive, that's in classroom, that's in Seesaw. Um, it can be very hard for kids to keep track. And having worked with eighth graders recently, they look for any reason to look at me and go, I don't know, I can't find it, right? So the more streamlined I make it, the better my kids can stay 
focused and use less of those excuses about why they couldn't get their assignment or didn't know how to do it and um, more focused on the learning. Uh, the mobility and accessibility parts of Canvas are really great, um, especially for kids fourth grade and up who have a little more autonomy in their learning and uh, know how to use devices a little more efficiently. The, especially in high school too, this is all done on their phones. They, I've had students who I've tried to use a Chromebook at school, their district Chromebook, and they finally go, can I just use my phone? Cause I have the app on my phone. It's a lot easier for me. I'm like, yeah, use your phone, um, get it out and do what you need to do. So the mobility piece of it, the way it works on any device and it looks the same on any device is very helpful, not only to kids, but to their families. And then everyone's connected, as I mentioned before, we can loop everybody in on a student's progress. So why Canvas or any LMS? Here's some key points I wanted to point out. And I saw that Ryan popped in. And so Ryan, if you ever want to add anything, feel free. But it's a centralized place for content tools, whatever tools you use. So the big thing I am saying is I'm not saying you can't use Google anymore or you can't use whatever anymore, any tool that you use, um, whether it's YouTube, Flipgrid, Padlet, quizzes, whatever you use, you can use it in Canvas. And it just makes it easier for the kids and for you to organize that, to um, share that across multiple classes or grades or student groups. And so it works with everything. So nobody has to stop using what they're using. It's just going, going to a place where we hold all this. I'm trying to think what Leslie called it this week. I was talking to Leslie Machado and she said it's the, the closet where you keep everything like on hangers. <laughs> That's a good analogy. So um, it is a way for us to, to store those things. I like to think of it as your learning hub. You can still do everything you're doing, but this is the one place to organize it all, um, which is super amazing because normally you as a teacher would have to fork out money for a tool that has this type of capability, but the district has purchased it, as I said, so it's available to you to use. And I, I would like everybody to just give it a try because I think you'll be, you will be a uh, convert. You'll love it as soon as you get into it. And these grades right. can automatically go to Aries. They can be sent to Aries. I mean, so then it's another advantage. You don't have to grade something and then go to Aries and put it in there. Yes, and I didn't even have to do anything in Aries. I worked all on Canvas. And then when I was ready to stick my grades for weekly grades or progress reports or a grading period, I just clicked, you know, to sync and push it. I choose which assignments I want to be pushed out and it goes, it was really, really easy to do. Thanks, Tom. And then um, it's an online environment for classroom communication and feedback. I would love to talk more about that in the future, but just the tools that are available to, just as an example, kids can set up in their settings, which they know how to do pretty easily, where you could show them um, how to get push notifications when you post a new assignment, how to get push notifications when something's due, when something's been graded. So that is where kids live. I don't know if you've ever noticed, or maybe you're a push notification addict as well, like I am. I mean, every time this thing goes off, I'm like, huh? But um, that is a nice tool because kids are looking at devices, even on their laptops. They have it set up to have things notify them in the corner. So that's a great tool to keep kids engaged in their learning, focused on their learning, and current on what they're, uh, what's happening in their class. And since you're on the Y Canvas slide, Ray, you, you said I could jump in. So um, the one thing I'll add is that historically, I think there's been a vibe that, you know, we, we maybe try things as a district for six months or a year and then bail on it. We've we've invested in this as a district, just so everyone knows, we have this for the next three years. So it's not something that's going away in the short term. Um, and it's a tool we, we believe in and um, is, I think, if you're worried about investing your energy into learning this new, this, this new tool, and have it taken away from you. That's not something I would be overly concerned with. It's something that we have invested in and want to invest our energy and, and time and money into moving forward. Thanks, Ryan. I see Sarah asked in the chat, does uh, this also work with grading for K-5, the standards grading? And I don't know, Tom, that's a you question. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what standards grading is. I, but, I can take, oh, I can take okay. that. It's, oh. it, 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 it will not. Um, okay. At this point, if we configured the Aries uh, standards based grade book, I, I believe it's possible, but um, it's not something we have we have figured out yet. But th does it talk across platforms? Yes, absolutely. But right now, um, you know, the Canvas grade book is is grades, you know, number letter grades, and and so is the Aries grade book. 
But if, if there's a one to five or one to four grade teacher that wants to jump into that, let us know and we can, we can try to figure that out with you. We can, we could try to figure it out. And one of the strengths of Canvas is their rubrics. You could, we could, as a district, push out standards aligned rubrics that you could use, which would also help grading um, transfer over to areas. And we would certainly love to look into that. We just haven't set it up yet. So it's, it's something we will look into. So question, mm -hmm. um, I know too, that this is beneficial, like for my college courses, we use Canvas. So I know it from the student perspective. So it'll be really good for our kids once they move on because they're kind of phasing Blackboard out more and more. So, I mean, that's another bonus point in it. But um, I was gonna say, you were saying you could use Google. So could, would you like create links in the assignments on Canvas to their Google Classroom or how do you, do you just basically stop using that? I will show you how I moved to doing it. I used to put links in. I would okay. just put the link to whatever I wanted them to do in Google in Canvas, but then I found uh, a better way. And so I got super excited about it. And right, but um, it does work yes. together. Yes. Yeah. You just okay. create it in Canvas, just like you normally would. And then Canvas keeps track of everything. It's, it's way better, I think, than Classroom is. Yes. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll demo it for you in just a minute, but you can actually create an assignment and it'll make a copy of the doc or the slides or whatever for every kid. They can work on it within Canvas. They don't have to even leave Canvas. Okay. And then, that and then they submit thing. it. Yeah. Because right yeah. now, like they have to log in clever and then go over here to get to that. This way, no everything more. could be all yes. in Canvas. Yes. Yes. Hi, Rob. Like I readies and things like that. Or would they still have to access those via clever? Well, I already, um, they should be able to get to that through Canvas. Um, I know we use Clever as a, as a rostering tool, right? And so Ryan and Tom can talk more about that, but they should be able to, you should be able to, in your Canvas instance, put the link to the iReady or something, and then they should be able to go right to iReady from there. Is that correct, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, think about Canvas as an option for a single sign-on platform, right? So Clever, you know, is a single sign-on jumping off point, right? But there's no yeah. reason you couldn't drop a link to, to Clever if we had to go that route or directly to iReady within Canvas. So, you know, it's a, it's, it could replace, you know, going to Clever first. Yeah, I'm just um, trying to think of yeah. one less, either them not going to their waffle or not going to their Clever because it's not in their waffle, like just going yeah. straight to Canvas with my Correct. three to five. Yes. yes, having it would absolutely, thing. absolutely work for that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and I'll show you right here when you go to anywhere in Google, you would go to your waffle and Canvas is there. And they would click on Canvas and then they would access anything you put in Canvas. And I put everything in Canvas. So I would put links to anything they need, I could put in Canvas. Anything I use, I, you know, so it's all there. So, and I'll show you in, in a little bit there. Awesome. All right, Robert, so I know you, oh, sorry, go Robert, ahead, Rob. I'm sorry, Rob. So I was just noticing that this is being recorded. Uh, can I get this emailed to me, the recording after, just so I could like, if I need to be like, oh, what was she doing at that little spot or whatever, then. Yes, Rob, you just email me if I don't send it to you, okay? Okay, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yes. Just wanted to make sure, because I imagine this is going to be super. <laughs> no problem. Um, oh, and I wanted to thank Brandy for bringing up the point about everybody is using Canvas. That's another reason we chose Canvas is because they use it at College of the Redwoods at all the Cal State campuses, um, everywhere. So it really is a tool that will help our students when they move on to any other form of education. Um, a lot of training is in Canvas. So, you know, for those kids that move on to that, it will be something they're used to. So that's good training for them as well. So thank you for bringing that up. I know you're all busy. My suggestion is start slow. You don't have to build out your whole course and get everybody moving instantly, all the canvas, all day, all, all the time. Now, if you're an overachiever that doesn't sleep at night and you wanna do that, more power to you, but you don't have to go there. We could, you could start slow, and we're gonna talk more about that at the end, about how you can start slow. The thing about canvas, it is, everybody uses it in their own unique way. It does so much, as you will find out, that you will find, oh, I really like it for this piece and I like to use it this way. You know, people, some people really focus on the calendar feature. Some people really focus on the assignment feature. Some people really focus on the resources that I can post class announcements and class links. So you need to start where it's comfortable for you and makes sense for you. And so I suggest thinking as we go through today, 
could I do a lesson in Canvas and just get them in there and see how it goes? Could I do a unit, maybe just one project that we manage in Canvas? Um, do you want to do it with a single subject? Like if you're teaching, maybe just put math in there. Um, or if you teach multiple periods, you want to just use it with first period or maybe, you know, your, your best period that's the easiest and most manageable at first. So you get it down and then use it with other periods. So you don't have to use it everywhere all the time to start. You can start slow. Here's a quote from a parent that I got this year in a parent conference. <laughs> she said, I got three children. And if everybody could just use the same platform, it would really help us. She was pulling her hair out. Three kids, three different grades. Uh, each year they change, and it could be any combination of things. So she said, boy, you, you were able to put you know, Padlet into Canvas, quizzes into Canvas, their science textbook into Canvas, their history textbook, textbook into Canvas. If we could just everybody use Canvas, then parents wouldn't have those questions also, because I think parents, you know, as we all know, um, are having to learn to navigate education more than they want to probably. And it was helpful for, for the parent if we could condense these things, which is what Canvas can do. I also think it's helpful for students, as I mentioned earlier. Um, if I can eliminate options for them saying, well, where is that? I don't know where that is. If I can just say it's in Canvas, it's in Canvas, that, that's helpful too. Canvas also helps address the fundamental five. Um, the most common stressors for young learners can be summed up in five questions. I think it's for all learners, actually. Number one, what am I supposed to do? Number two, when does it do? Number three, how do I do? Can you, number four, can you help me? And five, what more can I do? You can answer all those questions within Canvas. Um, and it's clear communication. It's a clear learning path for students and helps them uh, reduce the risk of falling behind. Like I said, in saying, I lost my paper. I don't know where that is. I can't find it, you know, how do I do it? So it, the fundamental five is developed um, and I'm happy to share if anybody wants to know, but there's a fundamental five paper uh, from Canvas that talks about using it in a K-5 environment. And they've actually upgraded a ton for K-5 environments. And so if anybody in three K-5 wants to use it, I would love to meet with you guys separately and talk about how to make it more attractive for K-5. It tends to be a little more, you know, 6, 8, 6, 12-ish looking. And they are really, really, because of COVID, I think they've had a huge uptick in users in K-5. They're really doing some neat stuff um, to make it available for K-5. One last thing I'll say about K-5. Um, there was a superintendent at another district in another state that uses it. And he said for kindergarten, they use it. And they, they don't worry about grades, they um, integrate it with badging, which we have that set up also. So kids would earn little badges, like stickers, when they complete things. And that was super motivating for the kids. It you know worked with them on their level. And so that's another way we could use it. All right, let's go over a few features and benefits. We've talked about some of this. Uh, learner support, assignment due dates, trigger reminders to the kids. And that's really helpful, like I say, especially if they're on their devices, they have a Chromebook that's assigned to them now or an iPad, um, or they have their personal devices at home that some of them use. And those reminders can be very helpful when um, things are coming up due, you know, writing proficiency or math or whatever else you have assigned in there. Communication. Oh, I, I guess I left that one up. This is not communication. <laughs> That is just a piece of text that was there before. So my apologies. Um, communication, and what was the other one here? I think calendar, this is supposed to be calendar. The calendar is a huge communication tool. One of our trainers last year from Canvas said, if you don't use anything, use it for the calendar feature because it takes everything, announcements, class links, due dates, and puts it all in one spot. So even if the kids don't learn to use all the fancy tools, discussion posts and rubrics. If they just use the calendar, it would help kids stay organized and know where to go um, for anything that you want to uh, post in your class. And then as Tom said, the grade book, you can sync your grade book directly to Aries. It works super easy for eighth grade. Um, I haven't done it in K-5, but we will look into setting it up for, for K-5 or having an option for K-5 and standards-based grading. K Is that K-6? Yeah, K-6 is standards, but no, just K-5. Uh, more benefits. Uh, students always know where they stand in the grade book because um, I would have students that go to Aries and go, oh, I, I'm 
you know, it says one thing in Aries, but it says something else in Canvas. Canvas is live. They can look at any time and see what I've graded, what I haven't graded, feedback I've given them, what's still due, what's missing. Aries is kind of a, a shot in time. And so the gra Canvas gradebook is very useful um, for the students. For communication, there's instructors, right? You teachers, students, and observers which could be, um, I've had observers in my class, the after school program IA became an observer for her students so she could help them know what's missing and what they're working on after school, parents, guardians, SPED teachers, uh, anybody that needs to be you know, around that student and kind of huddle up around them to help them can be an observer for that student. You can get alerts via email, text, message, or social media. You can send important information instantly without having to go through email accounts. And I don't know all the grades that we have in here, but I know a lot of middle school and high school teachers spend time putting together mail lists, which you don't have to do anymore. In Canvas, all your kids are, raised, are arranged by grade level, um, period, or subject, however you teach. And um, you can also set up groups. So it makes communication very easy. And I love the announcement feature because it pops it up. So when they log into Canvas, my announcement's at the top because I determine what they see when they log in. And so when I had a new announcement about a field trip, um, a permission slip, um, something we're doing in class, you know, the class party, uh, a test, I can make that pop up right at the top of their screen so that they see it. One nice thing about uh, the communication is there's this place where you can do students who and then haven't turned in the assignment or have got below a certain grade or above or, you know, those sorts of things. So it will just pull out all the students for you. You can just send them a quick note without having to you'll figure out exactly who that is. Right, that's a great feature. Yeah, students who have, have it missing, you can pull all missing assignments for a certain thing and then email those kids directly. Hey, Ray. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for that calendar feature, if we were to pre-plan and, and upload all of the assignments, links and all of that, is the calendar, does it self-populate kind of like a schedule that the kids could use that we could print? because I find that the kids, their executive function isn't always <clears throat> the best. And um, having maybe that kind of self-populated calendar with the assignments and due dates would be really helpful for that particular week. Is that something that it can do? Yes, it can. And like you say, it self-populates. So as you put things in, it pops up on their calendar so they don't have to do anything. They just go and it's there. You could print it out and put it, attach it to an independent study. You could print it out, put it on their desk and help with executive function that way. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. All right, so let's look a little bit at Canvas and then I'll take you into my Canvas so you, I can show you a few more things. But basically when you look at Canvas, this is the dashboard view. Can you guys see that okay? Yes. And so um, this is what mine looks like. So the course cards are all these cards in the middle that are my classes. So there's my eighth grade science. It's still in, in my name right now and my advisory period. Um, those are two classes that are active right now. Computer science and engineering was something I did last year with middle school students. Um, I have a professional development book study. If you do a book study with colleagues, you could put that in here. We're doing UDL. And then I have some classes that I use for my own learning. Um, Canvas Admin Quick Start and Growing with Canvas. So these are all the published courses. And if I scroll down here, you would see all my unpublished courses, which you can also have things that you're working on down below. So those are the course cards. On the right is the to-do list. This became super important once I learned how to use it well, thanks to Luke O'Laughlin who gave me some tips there. And um, this piles up when you have 160 something eighth graders, uh, these numbers get crazy large <laughs> and it's very depressing. So I like to knock those out and I, you know, I like to go like you can see I have 16 more here. When I took this screenshot down there, it says 16 more to grade. I like it when I can get to no more, just, just what's on the screen and I can breathe for a minute and I get, I go get like a Pepsi or something. Right. Um, but I can show you my tip later, but there's your to-do list. So you always see what's current, what you need to grade. What's great about that is um, this is, January and I just took the screenshot and you can see somebody just turned in their CER for the first week of school. Okay, which is fine with me. I grade anything. If you do it, I'll grade it. So I'm going to go back. I will even go back and change first trimester grade. If that kid does a good job on that, you know, and earns a better score. 
So that's kind of nice. You can see what they're working on and what they're turning in. And then coming up is down below in the bottom right corner. So these are ass ass um, assignments that have been posted and that are coming up. So it, it's a little bit different from the kids view, but they have a very similar view. When you look at the navigation, just like in mine here, our global navigation is the blue bar on the left. And in this sample, it's kind of a gray bar. That's global navigation. That's my whole Canvas account. Right on the next to it, that next one where it says home, announcements, modules, grades, that is the course navigation. So if I was to open up a science eighth grade, I would have a white bar there and I would get me going in and around my course. And then the blue bar is going around my whole account. So that's kind of a confusing thing at first that people don't understand. Um, Global navigation symbols, I put them here just so you could have them for the future. But there's a lot, all the things that they mean. So admin, dashboard, courses, groups, all those things are here. Lots of things, like I say, calendars over there because the calendar is in your global navigation because calendar, like you mentioned, Laura, self-populates for everything. So it's not just a calendar for math and a calendar for English. The calendar is for the kid, for everything they're doing in Canvas. So even if they switch teachers, if both teachers post in Canvas, their calendar will be comprehensive of everything. That's why it's such an awesome tool. All right, moving down here, Canvas assignments. This is the game changer for me. Um, this is a video showing you how to add a Google assignment and make a copy for all students. And I can, um, let's just watch it real quick. Or, I could show it to you, but this is done really well and it's very short and I'll probably stumble around. So let's watch this real quick and I'll show you. Maybe try. Hi, in this video, we're going to discuss how to use the external tool submissions or assignments. And particularly, we're going to talk about the Google Docs cloud assignment, similar to what we have with the Office 365, but this will mimic the features that we have in Google Classroom inside of Canvas. So we're going to go down to our course. I'm going to use a course that I've made up that I have my daughter in, enrolled so that we can see what it's like from a student perspective. So we go to our assignments. We make a new assignment. Go ahead and give it a title. Go ahead and add in our description. And then we're going to go ahead, we're going to give it a point value. We're going to choose what maybe category it falls under, display points as you choose that. And then this is the part right here. So normally, so this is what um, I mentioned earlier. I know it's a lot here and you don't maybe know how to make assignments yet, which is fine, but he's using this external tool. I used to do this the hard way. And then I found this external tool, easy magic way, and it changed my life. So this is really awesome, but it'll show you what it looks like for kids you would have done online or maybe in paper, but you're going to choose external tool as a submission type. Then you'll click find. Then if you scroll down, you'll see you have a lot of extra things. You'll see you have here Google Docs cloud assignment. That then pulls up your Google Docs. So now I can search for my template that I want my daughter to work on. I can click submit. I hit select. I can go ahead and assign it just to her. I can make it due at the end of the week, make it available from this whole week all the way till next Monday. And then I can go ahead and save and publish. So now I have this assignment and it's all brought in and here's this document and you can see is almost, this is a little tough to see in the screen, but you can see it actually brings in this entire Google doc. So it brought in the Google Doc right into Canvas. That's what we we're saying. They don't have to click a link and go out to Google. They can work on it right there. They can submit it right there. They never have to leave. So you can keep them uh, within the assignment you created. I create assignments that have maybe a video and maybe a little video announcement for me, giving them more description. So maybe they watch a science video. I talk about it in another video and then they do the work down there on the doc. They don't ever have to go anywhere. I could put all those things in one spot and emulated inside of the uh, Canvas assignment. So now let's see it from a student perspective. So then here on the student screen, I can click over here. I can see that I have a to-do list. So now I have this document. 
it's going to, again, it's going to emulate and load right inside of the canvas. So as a student, I could go ahead and type right in here, but it's a little bit easier to go ahead and just type it in this way. So, so you could type it right in the doc, but if they're on a small screen, they can also click it and open up in a bigger window, but they don't have to, they can type on it right there. So I've loaded some preloaded things here. So let's go ahead and add in her name. All right, he's gonna go on to show how to submit it and all that, so we won't go into that. But that is pretty awesome that you can put that Google assignment right in there and it makes a copy for each kid. So if I assign that to my whole class, um, all my eighth graders are 150 of them. They each get their own copy they work on, it's made, and then they submit them right to me. All right, moving on. Um, we talked a little bit about integration and how you can do all that you're doing now just within Canvas. So Canvas integrates really well. And here's some tools that integrate like I showed you. You can bring them right into Canvas. So Google Docs, Google Slides, Flipgrid, um, Quizzes, Quizlet, Padlet, Nearpod, there's more. Um, but there's also things that you can use uh, and it will, it will bring them in, not like the Google Doc where it's embedded and um, emulated right there, but it will bring something in that you can send them to also. So even if there's things that you use all the time that can't integrate fully with Canvas, you can still bring them into Canvas and have that link there for them or that resource there for them. Ray, is YouTube one that you can embed into the file or do you have to link it? Nope, it's embedded right in. Awesome, thank you. Yep, I use it all the time. And, and then- Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't, because we have Canvas integration or YouTube into Canvas, isn't doesn't that automatically put the, that YouTube video on our allow list so that you yes. don't have to? Yes. So yeah. instead, like if there's a YouTube video that's blocked for students, you would normally have to reach out to the IT department for us to put that on our allow list. But if you put that YouTube video in Canvas, that integration, it, it circumvents us completely. So you're managing your own YouTube allow list by using YouTube through Canvas. Is that that's correct, right, Tom? Yes. Yep, that's right. Thank you. That saves all of us time. Us too. Good. You, you got my yeah. point. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So as I mentioned, there's also apps in there that you can uh, use for other things. So um, some things integrate really, really well fully and you, it brings it in and populates it in or emulates it in Canvas. And some things you can still bring in and link to your app that you want to use um, so that it's in there, but they might have to go out to work. It'll take them out to work on it. But um, but everything can be linked into Canvas. And so just a brief view of um, some of the apps. This is just scrolling through the list of apps. CK12, if you use that notebook, I mean, just so many things. So it's extensive, it's extensive. And if there's one that you're not using, we can certainly, you can actually in Canvas submit that request to Canvas to set up that LTI that, um, I don't know what it's called, but to ask that that be something they pursue a partnership with. So there's tons is what I'm saying. Um, and I think everyone will find most of the things they use can be used within Canvas. And then um, where should you start? I would start here with this Growing with Canvas course. Tom set that up for us. It's a great tool if you just want to learn first before trying it. This is how you can use Canvas as an educator to get some professional learning within Canvas and learn all the different ways you can use it and what, the, what it can do for you in your classroom. Um, Tom, did you have anything to add there? I would say if, if you want to do this, I can definitely help you do it. Dustin and I, uh, are the Canvas people here and we want you to succeed. So I know it seems pretty complicated, but in about a half an hour, we can set up your class so your students, um, you know, will be able to, you know, they'll be squared away on day one of you using this. That was kind of my question. Like, is it kind of like with Google, like classroom where we let you know and you just populate everything We for would us, work or? together. The students okay. are already there. If they were to log into Canvas today, your students would see their Aries assigned course, but uh, I can help you develop it. And since we have this for through 2024, any work that you do now, you can use next year and the year after, you know, the, you, yeah. 
So any improvement the assignments. you make. But yes. my question is like, so because it'd be grade level and then we would have our four, five subjects, we could put those in there as well. Oh, yes. Everything's yeah, yeah. in there. And so at Mountain, especially, you see a lot of these course cards here. Like you see all mine here. <laughs> yeah. When you're at Mountain, you have a ton because you have all the subjects for all the grades. Okay. What we did last year um, for Mrs. Hooper, who used it in 6-8, um, and I think I showed your 6 eight teacher this year. I think Julie did this too. And this is what I did for my science. I had six sections of science and I didn't want all those course cards. So I cross-listed them all. So I built a, a generic eighth grade science course and mm -hmm. I pulled every one of those periods in there. And I won't pull up my kids because that would be um, all their names yeah. and information would be there. But when you pull them up, you see all your kids and it says period one, period two, period three. So they're still kept in their courses okay. in their different in their different groups and areas. But I only have to post things once okay, for, that for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can easily post it to multiple sections or, or whatever I need to do. So okay. that's called cross-listing. And so if you don't want to have all those different course cards, some people want it, some people don't. But you can also condense those down and just manage everything from one course or two courses or however you want to do it. Okay, thank you. So this is um, how it looks. It's, it's really pretty easy to navigate. As I said, the blue bar is my global navigation. So that's my account in Canvas. And then this white menu bar here on the left is navigating within this course. So I'm in science right now. I'm in my modules. I do everything by modules and I've done them by date. So since the beginning of the year, you can see when we started, I mean, I've got everything in here. And so every week I just do another module and add their assignments for that week so that my students just had to look and go, okay, what day is it? That's what week we're in. And I always put that week at the top so they don't have to scroll down. The most current week is in front of them. And that's the stuff that's due that week or that we're working on. I can put um, assignments here. Like I have the picture vocabulary, um, some vocabulary sheets for them. I have a answer key. So if I have a guest teacher or somebody subbing for me because I'm out, I can attach the answer keys right here. Everything is here. It's sub plans to go. I can put notes. And what I do is if it's green, it's published. The kids can see it. And then down here, you'll notice my answer key is not published. It's not green. So the kids can't see it, but the teacher can. So anybody I give teacher access to um, has access to that. And you can give them aid access and have to have full teacher access. And then what I also do uh, let me see why so many things here. I'm not sure where I put some things, but what I try to do is um, let's go down here a little bit. I can embed a lot of other things in here for them. So I'm not sure which assignments have it. Yeah, so here's one that's an example. I put my video instructions here. So this is me talking about the assignment. So if they go home and forget, there's a video of me explaining it again. If they're absent, if they're on independent study, whatever, here is me showing them how to do it and giving them, I don't do very long, it's a minute of instruction. I'm not gonna sit there and jabber on for 10 minutes because they won't watch it, right, ever. Um, and then I put a copy of the assignment there for them. And this is before I learned that integration tool, I used to have them make a copy of this assignment. And so they would just click on this and make their own copy and submit it to me. But now they don't have to do that. All they have to do, it's made, all they have to do is do it. They don't have to make a copy. They don't have to name it. They just have to do the assignment, which is awesome. Um, and then they submit it uh, up here when they're ready to go. There's a submit button for students. You can also see the student view for anything that you do. I just click on that student view button and it shows me what the kids will see. I do this all the time because I forget to share things or do things and it lets me see what they're gonna see. Okay, that looks right, yay. Um, students also have access to immersive reader. So any text that is on the page, sometimes I put some text there um, or I copy and paste a poem or I copy and paste whatever, immersive reader reads the screen to them. So that's an accessibility tool and it's built in. So another great tool for your students that have IEPs or struggle with um, reading on the screen, they can have the immersive reader there. And so anytime you see that button, it will read what's on the screen for them. Okay. Um, Let's move back over here. 
So here's another quote. This is um, Dr. Uh, Kariskin in Pennsylvania. He said, Canvas is going to allow us to create more personalized learning pathways so kids can work through a progression of learning regardless of grade level. There are so many opportunities here. What if your grade level created a uh, course in Canvas and you each put your struggling readers in it and you did some special instruction just for those kids? What if you created math groups? What if you um, had extension activities for your high, higher achieving kids who are past this and needed something more challenging to do? Lots of opportunities here that you can make available to your students. Some things we're working on as a district, as a district um, are benchmark rubrics. As I said, rubrics are huge in Canvas and you not only have the, cam, the rubric attached so the kids see what's expected of them, what's my teacher want me to do, but you can also use that for grading and you can also leave comments and feedback on that. So you can really use a rubric with a kid uh, so that they can understand what's expected of them to uh, reach mastery on an assignment and then get feedback on that assignment that's specific about what they did or didn't do that could improve that product for them. So rubrics we're looking at doing at least for benchmarks in the district or any other type of rubrics that we could create and push out for you that would be helpful. Parent and student training, we've done some of that, but certainly working on ways that we can support parents and students more. If we can get more teachers using it and our goal is to get um, all students in sixth grade and up in Canvas with their teachers, uh, we love to bring on fourth and up after that, but we're focusing on sixth and up right now. Um, then we could really train parents and students more. It's hard when we're using so many different things to just say, okay, parents, here's what you need to know because they need to know classroom and they need to know clever and they need to know, um, you know, maybe just Google Docs or Seesaw or whatever the uh, dojo and all those different things that people are using. It, I'd rather ever integrate those into Canvas so we can train them on Canvas so that parents know how to check grades, parents know how to communicate with you, kids know how to check their grades, turn in assignments, um, ask questions of their teacher and things like that. And then last is blueprints and templates. We haven't done this yet, but I think it would be helpful. I think we're making it more work for teachers by not doing it. We could create a template as a district. So you start with a district template, which has some basic things done for you and will save you time on that building of your course. So I think at the end of this year, I'm looking for feedback from teachers about what do you want in that template? And then we'll just build those templates for next year. And last, um, you have opportunity to see how others are using Canvas. As Brandy mentioned, when we first got started, we have a um, Learn Canvas series coming up on Wednesdays, uh, starting February 9th is the first one. And that is where we're gonna share who's already using Canvas. So you can see teachers using it and what their classrooms look like. And I have one teacher signed up to share so far. Hopefully I'll get a couple more and I can share more of my course as well. But um, that's Wednesday, February 9th, 3.30 to 4.30. You can click here to register for this or other sessions. This will take you to all the sessions that I have set up for Canvas. So there's the Canvas share out on the 9th, uh, a new user session on February 23rd. Uh, some March sessions include Google and Canvas, just a whole work session on Google and Canvas. Uh, Canvas tips and Q&A. And then April, we have creating parent observer support plans, assessment and feedback. And then in May, rubrics and grading assignments, best practice for ending the year. There's a lot of things you want to do to wrap up your year uh, so we can begin for next year. And then a last one in June on Canvas tips and Q&A. So it's every other Wednesday starting in February. Okay. And then um, it's time for question and answer now. Uh, so if you have a question, you can unmute and ask it or post it in the chat. And then also um, session feedback. If you click this link and fill out this feedback form, and I'll also post it in the chat, um, I'm going to take those names of everybody that completes it right now, and I'm going to spin it before you leave. And I have two canvas cups here. These are canvas cups with a straw. They've got a sticker, a canvas pen, and a bunch of candy in it. So I'll spin the um, wheel to give away two of those today. And you just want to complete this form here. Just put it in the chat. Give us some feedback. And then if you have an app that you want to be integrated, and as you're working with Canvas, you don't see it, you can submit a request here, and we'll look into it and provide you information on how to use that app in 
in Canvas. So if there's something you use every day and I need to use this with my kids in Canvas, we wanna help you make that happen. All right, so we'll give you a few minutes to fill out your feedback form or to ask a question. I'll tell you, you don't need to be a website designer to use this tool. It's pretty simple. Just if you need help, reach out and I'll show you it. There's not much to it. And while you're filling that out also, um, on the last slide here, slide 22 of today's slide deck, you can book a 15 minute session with me. Just it, click right here, it'll let you pick a time and book it with me. And then you and I can just talk on Zoom and I can walk you through anything you want to know. You can book a 30 minute session with Tom, as he just said, and he can, in two of those, he could have your whole class built. He's that good, it's impressive. Um, and then Dustin Patrick is also going to be doing more and more with Canvas. So um, he would be the person going forward. You'll probably start hearing from even more and he can help you as well. So uh, that's what I would do next is if you're interested and you wanna get started, book a session. So we can just get with you one-on-one -on -one and kind of get you up and running pretty quickly in 15 or 30 minutes. And, um, and then we'll, we're here to support you after that. Okay, let me stop sharing my screen. Excuse me, is there um is there a link to that or is that off the COP combo thing or no it's in it's on your calendar. This oh, okay. today's session is on your calendar and I put the link there, but here's also the slides link with everything, including cool, that you. feedback form. Yeah. This is just more <clears throat> structural information for everybody, but as IT has grown and we've recently added another one or two people, we will have another person by the end of the month, hopefully. Um, the goal here is to get Tom less on Canvas and Dustin more. Dustin Patrick is kind of our, gonna be our primary bridge between IT and curriculum resources, You know, whether that's iReady or Canvas or Classroom or whatever tool that might be. So um, anyway, as Ray alluded to, uh, Dustin, wasn't able to make it at this session today, but um, he'll be the primary point of contact moving forward for Canvas support. So he'll be there alongside Tom for the next few months while everybody gets up to speed that wants to, and then it'll be primarily Dustin moving into the next couple of years. I do want to book a session, but I can't plan it today because we've kind of got a lot of moving parts. So oh, I yeah. just want to kind of reach out and let you know I am interested. I got to look through my schedule and try to figure out what's even going to work for me. But I just want to say thank you. I'm like, I'm super excited because now that I know that Google and everything can be embedded too, uh, I appreciate you having this training in this video. Of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin the wheel now. So let's get that going. We'll give away some prizes. You guys can get on your way. Um, if you're still filling out the feedback form, keep doing it. We still have a minute here to get that. Oops, there we go, sorry. Let me do that. Okay, so here's everybody who has filled out the form. I'm gonna copy those names. I got my wheel of names ready to go. So now your names are on there. Anybody else submitting, anybody working on it? No? Speak up so I don't spin. Okay, looks like that's everybody. Uh, let's see. Who's gonna win the first super awesome canvas cup of goodies? Hey, congratulations, Sue, you won. I will send that to you at Crescent Elk. Let me put your name on it. Crescent Elk, all right. Take your name off the list. Let's see who's gonna get the next one. Rob, Rob, you're the winner. Congratulations. All right. I don't know what those chances so, were, what the odds were for that, but I never <laughs> win anything. So yay. I'll put your name on it. I'll send it to you at Redwood. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. Sign up for more sessions. Um, those, all the information is on the slide deck I shared with you. If you need anything today, email me. 
email Tom, book a session with us, and thanks for being here. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. All right. Take care.